Now let's bake out fire and see them. Once upon a time, this forest was exquisite because it was full of bright, beautiful, purple trees. The air was clean for animals to breathe. I could hear the birds singing in the clean water. I could see the fish swimming and the animals drinking. Then one day, I was surprised to see a wagon traveling through the forest. I remember watching the barbie lutes climbing up the truffle tree trunks to get ripe, delicious truffle fruit. While the humming fished hummed and spattered water around, they loved the cool, clear water of the sun shining pond. I worried as I watched the wagon travel around because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. One morning, I saw the wagon stop in a nice shady place. All of a sudden, a man got out and load his wagon. Then he began to build a small house. As I watched the man finish building his house, he went to a wagon and took a sharp axe. He walked over to a truffle tree and one chop he cut a stone tree down. He took up the beautiful truffle chop and began to make a shiny kind of thing. I was mad as I was doing something here to be done. I got out of the of the tree, perfect to be sugars and bossy. Hey, Mr. I said, I'm the Lorax. I speak for the trees because the trees have no tongues. And I'm telling you, Mr. You just chopped down the tree. Then I asked him what that thing was that he hadn't made of spectacular truffle top top. He tried to tell me he was doing no harm because there was only one tree he had chopped at that. He seemed that thing was called a sneak and that it was something that everyone needs. I told him he was crazy with greed and that no one on earth would buy that stupid need. At that very second, a man walked by and broke that thing for three ninety eight. I was furious that he had chopped down a tree and so it without my permission with no thought for the trees. Then he laughed at me and said, you never can tell what some people will buy. He went inside to use the phone. I followed him yelling at me for the trees, but he would not listen to me. I tried to tell him not to cut down more trees because it's bad for the environment. I was worried he didn't know that without trees we couldn't breathe. The next day, the man's family arrived and they built a bigger factory. All I could hear echoing about was axes, more axes chopping trees down. As I watched them made more and more and smith, while I thought to myself, stop cutting those trees. One morning, as I looked out to the flowers, I saw a hacker. It was a super axe hacker. No longer they were chopping down one tree at a time. Now they were cutting four times as fast. With one wet four chocolate tree were cut down to the ground. It made me feel like I wanted to run down and hit him down to the ground so he could feel what I felt to be cut down like a tree on the ground. The next week I had to knock on his door to tell him off again. Won't you just listen to me once? I said to him. I told him all about the bar bar loops and how they had no shelter and no food because he had cut down all their trees. No longer did they have shade from the sun and they got the tummies because there were no food for them to put in their tummies. They love living here but they cannot stay. I'm sending them off to find another forest where there are more trees for them to find. I said to him, I felt sad and watching the barber lips walk away because they all have fruit on their faces. It made me feel lonely and sad because I loved watching them play. It was like part of my family walking away. I felt sick in my stomach also I watched the factory get bigger. He built roads to the north, east, south and west for cars to drive on to deliver his dinner. He wasn't using his donkey anymore. Instead, it was cars with smoke coming out of the engine. The smoke from the cars and the factory chimney starts to make the sky foggy and smoggy. I started to feel sick. My throat was sore. My eyes were all red. 
I know that the swimming swan could no longer sing the beautiful songs because they had small messed up. So I knocked on the man's door to tell them they would have to go. They could not live here, so I'm sending them off. They could not live there's smoke in their lungs that stops them from singing the beautiful songs I said to them. They flew off, I wonder if shall we too to go somewhere beautiful where there's lots of fresh air and we can sing again together. I went inside and I said a few words to them about the food that his father was making and put it into a fish pond. It was made in the water all gooey and muddy. It meant that the hummingbirds could make splash of them so I sent them off to find a nice clear pond. As I said goodbye to the hummingbirds, I felt even more lonely because all my friends had gone. Then the man got mad at me and started yelling at me. He said he was going to make his factory bigger and everything bigger. He would be making more smoky smoke because he wanted to make more money so he would be rich. I couldn't believe what he was doing to his world through our environment. Suddenly we heard a loud noise. We ran outside to see an axe cutting down the last chop of the tree of the mall. All I could see was field after field with roads and tree stumps. Not one tree could be seen anywhere. I watched as his family left in their cars. All that was left was an empty factory, tree stumps on the ground, smoke in the sky, the man ate by. I was so disappointed because I tried to wonder if this would happen. I sent all of my friends off to clean up places. I was angry that he destroyed the air, the trees and the water, things that help all living things live. They needed air to be able to, to drink and choose for shelter and food. So I gave him a sad look and put myself out the list of a hole in the smoke. I left one word for him to think about unleashed. I wanted him to think about how we all went away. I wanted him to think about how we destroyed the environment by chopping down all the tree putting smoke into the sky and grew into the lakes. I wanted him to miss us while we were living happily in the in other forest. This book is about how chopping down Forest destroys the environment and animals' habitats. To be guardians of the environment, we need to care for our plants by not destroying the plants, planting new plants and giving them water and fresh air. Grow the forest, protect them from axes, then the animals that live there all may come back.